Well, hello, glue troopers, and welcome back to the Tarvis. Finally back and actually got a little bit of work done today. Now, uh, I had to run some honeydews today. I had to go to the hardware store and get some stuff. And while I was in there, I spied these things on, oh, wait a minute, for $2, I could have a whole nother shelf that I desperately need. And voila, I now have another shelf. And it's pretty far up there. I might lower it a notch. But anyway, point is, I got a shelf. Did a little rearranging and here we are. So great, because space is king, as pretty much all of us who build know, because no matter how much space you have to work in, somehow you always manage to fill it. So uh, I've been having a couple of uh, phone call chats with some folks that uh, have backgrounds in the hobby industry, and, they, and some of them in the car business, uh, and one gentleman, Steve, who uh, has it in both. And we're going to be talking about some of the stuff he's told me at the live stream. He sent me some emails, some uh, some pictures, and just a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, a lot of you guys, uh, Paul down in New Zealand, and a few other folks have sent me a lot of great information, emails and stuff, and I'm trying to compile it all. Uh, obviously, I'm getting backlogged because I uh, just too many irons in the fire. Uh, I'm going to a whole bunch of stuff I want to cover on the live stream. 2 o'clock East Coast time, 1800 Zulu on Saturday. Good Lord willing and the river doesn't rise. So, uh, got some work done on the SC5s. Got uh, one of them in uh, American markings. These are sort of a combination post-war markings. I was looking at the American airplanes from the First World War and you don't see the star on the wing because you remember the, the air service was brand new back then. We were using foreign aircraft, so what they did was is they gave the Americans an inverse, basically, of the British roundel. Uh, they had a red exterior, blue center, or white center with a blue middle ring. And, uh, but after the war, then once the air service came more established and got some SE-5s, it was the E model, which is basically an SE-5A with, I believe, with an American engine dropped in them trying to get a little information on that but I found pictures of them. there aren't that many uh, but most of them there are no two that are painted the same uh, so I sort of took a little uh, license with what I had seen on several different photographs and by the way the underwing star on one of them I found was actually pointing with a star to the rear I don't think they had a standard yet because everything was so new so I just kind of did that with this one for Hoots and hollers, kicks and giggles. My model, my way. So, uh, once I get those, then I have a, a lot more. I actually have, there are actually two more SE5s in those boxes. Uh, I'll get to those at some point. I am rigging one of them, and I more or less just got done with it today. Uh, with the rigging that was 170 second scale rigging with extra fine easy line that has a lot of spring and seems to defy gravity you try to drop it through and it sort of goes like that if just your breath will blow out of stuff is so fine really tricky to work with with these big uh paws but i finally got it done and i think that's going to be the last 170 second skill world war one model i rig i just wanted to see if i could do it and i yeah sort of did uh, mediocre job but you know what it actually unless you're looking real close it actually looks pretty good the irony is, is that you get much further away, you can't even see the lines because they're scale and they're so tiny. But uh, I know a lot of guys use stretch sprue for that and that actually might have been easier. So the other thing was I was working on this little BD-5 that was sent to me from uh, I believe that's 299 models. And I thought that would make a little nice little side project while I'm waiting for stuff to, you know, the glue to gas out and everything and firm up. And a little bugger turned out to be a nightmare in its own right. It did a lot of filing, fitting, it just because it's one of these little, uh, I guess, I really don't know that much about 299 models. I assume they're a, a small company that just makes a few specialty models. And sure, sure, sure. That caused me a little bit of grief. Uh, just, I thought it would just, you know, get eight, 10, 12 pieces and dee, 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 and nothing lined up, nothing stayed still. No, it's one of those kits but now that i'm into it i'm like no i will finish you so that's where we're at with that i have 
picked out the two models that I'm, I'm going to, the, this B25 is the one that I'm going to use. Of course, I'm going to do it up as a do little Raider for the B25 build. That Vanguard is the one I'm going to do for the uh, other group build, which I'm going to talk about in more detail. Now, there's something my wife said, and I was thinking about saving this for the live stream, but I, I, the way I forget things, I'd better do it now. I'm going to go into this story in a little bit more detail, but the Bowmark that was given to me, which is an original old Ravel kit, is going to be built by a friend of mine down in Fort Lauderdale, a buddy of mine, Ken. And I'll give you the whole story about why he wanted to do the Bowmark, because he mostly does train, model trains uh, and uh, RCs, and he's working on a big XF-11 Rainbow, uh, the big four-engine uh, airplane that was it was the fastest four engine airplane four engine piston engine airplane ever made and it didn't go into production but uh, it kind of looks like a leaked out b29 but anyway point i'm getting at is that he asked if he could build that and uh when he told me why i was like okay uh so that's what spawned the idea for this group build for cold war missilery that i'm going to get into more detail on the live stream but there will be a group a second group build but like I say, it'll probably won't be done till like Halloween, give everybody extra time because we've got the B-25s going. Now, when I, when I explained to my wife what a Bowmark missile was, which by the way stands in front of a state, it's Boeing Michigan Air Research Center, Bowmark. Uh, when I explained to her that this was a, a nuclear weapon that was made to go out and blow up in the middle of uh, a formation of enemy bombers, one way and it's a it's a jet and it's a rocket and it's a plane and she thought I was kidding I explained it to her and I told her you know there's a nuke up in the nose and we'll be talking about the Bowmark in some detail at the live stream but as I'm talking to her uh, we're having our afternoon coffee and up over my shoulder is the Godzilla display and she just goes how much damage do you think it would do to Godzilla and I was like I don't know, it's a new, could certainly get his attention. And she's like, you know, what you should do, and this is why I love this, one of the many reasons I love this woman so much, this is brilliance. Brilliance, I say! She goes, what you should do is, when everybody submits the pictures of their missiles, you should have a Godzilla scale and determine how much damage this missile would do to Godzilla. So, once all the model missiles are in for the missile bit, and Halloween's the perfect time to do it, um, we will have a Godzilla scale, missiles on a Godzilla scale. So, because, that's right, I'm a nerd. And uh, so, uh, I've got to work out all the details on that. Well, that kind of brings you up a speed on what I did today. I did get a little rearranging done here in the Tarbis. Uh, still have to get those models that uh, that Fred sent me put into the stash, but now I've got some extra room, and that's where we're at with that. So many models. You see, this is why I have to take better care of myself to live long enough to build all this. My empire! Most of which I owe to you guys. That's where we're at. Well, guys, uh, hopefully we'll get something out in the morning. I got family stuff this weekend. I mean, we're going to do the live stream at 2 o'clock, but I have a lot of family stuff going on uh, out of town or relatives coming in for visit. Very excited to see them. So I'm not sure what my schedule for videos and buildings is going to be, but uh, the live stream is a definite go. Uh, so take care of yourselves. We'll see you out in the world. And guys, as always, model on.